In this episode, we travel to Belgium to dig up a Wolverine. Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I am sitting in a lovely field outside of Bastogne here in Belgium. Now, I got a hint from a gentleman from the American army that there was a tank somewhere in this field that I can uncover. Now, what sort of tank it is, I don't know, but I have a slight suspicion it's American. So, without further ado, let me get my shovel and my metal detector and find out what it is. Alright, so we definitely have something here. Let me mark it off and get the shovel. Right, so I'm going to uncover it here. It's a little getting a little bit late at night, so I'm going to have to be digging throughout the night to try and see if I can find out what sort of tank this is. Oh, we found something, yeah. This looks rather interesting. Based off the back, yeah, this looks like a tank destroyer almost. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So, yeah, this definitely does look like a tank destroyer. I think this is definitely an M... Almost by the looks of it, it looks like an M10 Wolverine. Let's have a look. Oh, yes. It is. It is, it is. Okay, cool. So let me get the team out to dig this quickly. And then we can have a better look at her and see what uh, what she's all about. Right, here we go. Okay, so we have the tank recovery in process now. Switch the lights on. There she is. Look at that. That, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, she's been banged up a little bit. You can see there with the bullet holes or the shell holes. This is an M10 Wolverine, dubbed the Wolverine, actually. A really remarkable tank destroyer during the Second World War. And it's a very significant one, actually, as uh, the, 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 the amount of tank destroyers made from this specific model uh, is quite significant in the American Army. But anyway, let me just clean it up quickly and get it onto the trailer where we'll take it through to the workshop. Oh, look at this. This is a Colt 19 or 1911, actually. Well, then, uh, there's another one over there. A couple of these guns that lie around. They're very useful. Right, here she is. It's very dark at the moment. The morning is busy. Uh, coming and uh, well we have got no front end on this and we've got obviously the gearbox that are that's uh, sticking out so this one is in a pretty bad shape it's gonna take a little bit of time for me to get her fixed up I think she's gonna look pretty nice once we've once we've uh, you know fixed up and painted her and get her ready for War Thunder all right here she is the M10 tank destroyer also known uh, or dubbed by the army as uh, the Wolverine, the M10 GMC. A really, really iconic piece of metal in front of us here. And also just a lot of work waiting for me to get in, get cracking and uh, fixing her up. Now, there's a lot of areas that have taken quite a bit of damage. You can see on the bottom here, uh, there's definitely areas on the other side I feel that might need a little bit of work. Uh, but overall, she's not too bad in a condition can open up uh, and see, you know, what she's all about. She's got a bit of an engine still left, I guess. Now, the one thing I have to admit about these American tanks is that they have a lot of detail in this game, comparatively to the Russians and the German tanks. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this one to actually get this one fixed up. But she's going to look really, really cool once we're done. And then we'll just pop off to War Thunder and test her out on the battlefield. <laughs>
Right, okay, cool. Now I've taken off all the accessories on the outside of the tank. I'm gonna quickly have a look at a couple on the inside. And then once I'm done, then the needle filing will, will finally kick off. managed to actually hit the hull with uh, the needle file and I've taken out all of the components now that I think that needs uh, uh, that needs to be sent off basically for cleaning up uh, but for now I'm just going to continue with this at the moment there's a lot of work to be done on this M10 comparatively to the other tanks that I've done um, so this will take a little while Alright, so the primer has been applied basically to all of the parts of the tank. I'm going to move over now to apply the final coat to the tank and let's see how it looks. Right, so there we have it uh, the final coat has now been applied to the tank as you can see still missing that front uh, kind of area of this tank uh, that's the, the frontal plate and all of that but we'll replace that and get it ordered in uh, and then also just kind of finish the assembly of this gearbox uh, there's still the engine that I need to do and of course the turret itself so I'm just going to continue now working on the turret getting it all ready for the next bit have in front of here is the General Motors twin diesel engine. I think this is about a 375 brake horsepower engine. At the time it was pretty revolutionary and, and pretty uh, badass as well for the tank. Definitely helped it along. So I'm going to put this one together. It doesn't really look complete as of yet. So just hang around and you'll see what I mean.
right so there we have it this is the engine the twin diesel engine pretty much ready to go into the tank itself now that i've shown you exactly how intricate this engine is there is a number of other engines that are pretty intricate as well when it comes to the sherman tanks and various others but we'll unpack them as i dig them out of the ground in episodes to come so for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start assembling the hull and all of the pieces into the hull then i'll get to the turret and then once i've done all of them i'm going to put them all together put in the fuel put in the liquids uh, such as the oil and the coolant and then I'm going to scoot over to War Thunder and show you what she's all about. As you can see that the gearbox is quite intricate here um, i'm putting in the remainder of the gears which once it's in place i can then finally put in the front plate so you can see it's coming along now you know the final drives are in place the, the brakes are in there as well very very cool gearbox uh, in, in most cases, I think with the Shermans as well, all of them have this sort of gearbox uh, in the front, which is really cool. So we have now fully assembled the hull, the engine, and of course the turret. Let me put them all quickly together for us. And there we have it, the Wolverine, the M10 GMC. An absolute marvel of a tank destroyer. Not exactly a tank, but a tank destroyer. And uh, well, I think it's time for us now to put in some fuel. Uh, of course, some coolant, some oil, and then we're going to go off to War Thunder to battle it out. Known as the Wolverine, the M10 GMC, known by many as the Battle Rating 3's Ultimate Tank Destroyer. It 
doesn't have much armor. That's why you need to be ultra careful on where you position yourself. But it's cannon. The M7. It's a 76 millimeter beast. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the M10 GMC, nicknamed the Wolverine. An interesting tank nonetheless, or tank destroyer. I have to admit, though, it's a very sluggish tank destroyer, like the most of them, in all, in all honesty. But there's something special that I do like about this tank. And I think it's probably got to do with its cannon, right? Its ability to penetrate pretty much anything in the battle rating of 3, 3.3, 3.7, even 4. And to me, that's a pretty big deal. You know, having this sort of uh, tank in your arsenal is always going to be great. It's always going to be beneficial. And if you get stuck in a rut, you know, pull it out. It'll definitely help you out, but just take it slow. That's, that's the best advice I can give you about this tank. Anyway, enough of me blabbering along about tank destroyers. Speaking, though, of tank destroyers, there is one in particular. Check this video out of a tank destroyer I did recently. It's called the Stug 3G. 